Welcome back to the Performance Video Training Series. In this video, we will dive into building a new system in Design Mode. The goal of Design Mode is to build a virtual representation of our system in the software so what we see in the workspace matches what we see in the real world. In Performance, defining an entire system is a quick and straightforward process of simply dragging devices into the main workspace area and arranging them as desired. When starting a file, Design Mode will be active and the HControl ID system view will be selected. The modal toolbox here contains system groups and individual devices. Although individual devices can be added to the workspace, to create intelligent groupings of arrays, first add system groups to the workspace and then populate them with devices. There are two types of system groups available, one for arrays of full range speakers and one for subwoofer arrays. The number next to the groups and devices represents the quantity of the item to be added into the workspace. Quantity can be increased, decreased, or manually entered. Clicking on any numeric value box will display a keypad to make entering values easier on touch devices. If preferred, this keypad pop-up can be disabled in the application settings window. In this example, there will be two main arrays, a left and a right. Under System Groups, Array Quantity is set to 2 and dragged into the workspace. After adding a new system group to the workspace, the software will prompt you to specify the array symmetry options. Parameters that are checked will be linked across all arrays in the new group. These controls will default to all checked, but they can be changed later. Clicking Yes will populate the workspace with a group of two empty arrays. Each new system group will get a color and a unique group name that can be changed. The next step is to add speakers to the empty arrays of the system group. For this example, eight full range devices are dragged from the toolbox to the left empty array. Because both of these arrays are part of the same system group, the right array also populates with eight devices. The software has already created logical names for the individual arrays and the group the arrays belong to. These names can be changed by double clicking and entering new logical names. Arrays and devices in the workspace can be rearranged by dragging them from the array header. There are some tools, keyboard, and mouse shortcuts that make navigating performance easier. This tool here is the zoom tool. Clicking it will zoom into a selected item, or if nothing is selected, will zoom out to show the extents of the venue. Pressing the spacebar is the same as clicking this icon. Zoom in or out of the workspace by holding the control key and scrolling the mouse or trackpad. The middle mouse button will drag the canvas and the arrow keys will also move the view around. A vertical scroll will pan vertically and holding the alt key while scrolling pans the workspace horizontally. When selecting items in the workspace, clicking and dragging from left to right creates a blue selection box and will only select items that are encompassed by the box. Clicking and dragging from right to left creates a yellow selection box and will select everything that the box touches. The alignment tools are available here to help arrange the selection of devices. Hovering your mouse over any one of these controls will expose a tooltip explaining its use. To continue our example venue, adding a set of fill speakers to this design follows the same steps. Set the quantity needed and drag the array group into the workspace. Next, populate the array with the correct quantity of speakers. For this design, we will use a single fill in each position. Give the new fill arrays a logical group name. When an array or device is selected, the Properties panel will show contextual properties for the selected item. When the array is selected, we can adjust the number of arrays in a group, adjust the linked controls across the system group, and adjust speaker quantity. 
When nothing is selected, the Properties panel hides and the System Group and Speaker panels show again. The next step in our example is to add a subwoofer array. Just like full range arrays, define how many arrays of subwoofers the design needs and drag the group into the workspace. An option pop-up will ask questions. First, are the subwoofers stacked in vertical column? Or are they stacked horizontally, on end, in a row? For this example, we will use the row option. The second question is whether the subwoofer arrays should be linked symmetrically inside out or not linked at all. When selected, parameters like preset, gain, and delay are linked symmetrically across the subwoofer arrays in an inside out pattern. When set to off, each subwoofer array has independent controls. The third question is whether or not all the subwoofer arrays should match. When checked, all arrays will match in the device type, quantity, and orientation. If this box is unchecked, the arrays can vary with respect to the symmetry options selected above. With the options set, we can populate these arrays with subwoofers. The orientation, array quantity, device quantity, symmetry links, and same device type options can be changed later by clicking on the subwoofer array and adjusting the settings in the Properties tab. Finally, rename the subwoofer group and arrange the workspace. Tapping the spacebar will zoom to fit the window and center the design. With the design now complete, it is a good time to save the file. In the next video, we will learn how to set device HCIDs and explore other system views in design mode.